Hey everybody, uh, Glenn Trayer, Trayer Wilderness. I don't know a little bit of a trek today, um, just to clear my mind and just relax a little bit, light a fire. I was looking for some cottonwood trees, but I uh, couldn't find any right in through here. I could trek a little further and find uh, find some, I'm sure, but I just don't. Uh, I don't feel like going up that direction any further. Um, so these mosquitoes are kind of crazy, but I am not so much going out for a super long trek today as I am just a time to relax, maybe make a video for you guys. Um, so what we're going to use instead of cotton wood, spin this around. I know everybody doesn't have these where they live, but um, those of you, those of you that do, uh, these work pretty good. I'll show you here. That broken tree right there is a snapped off of right there. That is a uh, cedar tree. And we're going to make our uh, base for our bow drill set out of that. Now, I'll show you something else. See that little squirrel over there? Jumping on that log. Alright, there he goes. Okay. In the west, the squirrels, the pine squirrels, will sit up on trees and stumps and make these piles of um, it's the outer part of the pine cone see where he's been going in there hiding nuts but this outer parts of the pine cone those make excellent fire tinder they're full of resin sap um, sometimes when it's rained for a while you can scrape off the top layer and get down into some real dry stuff. Uh, another thing I'd point out here is um, th this piece of tree that's old and broke down. You can see where it's sitting there chewing. Well, I'm sure some of that stuff has dropped down in and gotten underneath that. That is a great place to look for dry, dry stuff it's, if it's been raining for a while. So, just a little heads up there. Um, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go over here. Um, I think I know, I think I already see the piece that I'm going to use for my block, or, or my base, not my block. See this piece right here. Right there, that flat part. Um... I think that's the piece I'm going to use. And then you can also, um, if you live in cedar country, that bark makes excellent um, materials for getting, for making uh, bird's nests. Along with, uh, let's see if I can see any right here, a little bit on that limb over there. Um, but lichen but um, not a whole whole lot there's some hanging Let's see if I can zoom in and make it look clear right um, right there right there some hanging but works great for bird's nest now I'm gonna show you a little trick then um, kind of help your ember sustain your ember when you get the get an ember going so in your bird's nest but uh, all right well I'll get this stuff gathered up and I'll be back with you all right so this is gonna be our base I'll clean it up a little bit it doesn't have to be super fancy this tops are real nice and flat we cut it off of that. Now, something I wanted to show you is you can see this piece here. 
this is a piece of bark and if you look here this inner bark it's just pulling right up and that's what you want break down in real fine fibers to uh, make your bird's nest out of um, you can also take your knife and the inside of that and scrape and see here how these fine pieces are real fine pieces that's great uh, bird's nest material um, dry it up there's some pine nettles you could throw in the bird's nest um, I'm gonna gather up some of those uh, chewings from that tree squirrel and uh, yeah get my bird's nest together and um, I'll show you what I'm gonna do as far as like get my fire going and everything so alright guys be right back with you alright guys um just thought I'd I moved down a little bit closer to the um, river. Found a little place there that's like a little sand barge type thing. I'm going to go down there and sit on that just because it's not super, super dry out right now. But it's, it's dry enough that you want to be careful where you would light a fire. That's something when you're lighting a fire... Um, Pay attention. Pay attention to where you're lighting that fire at. You know, like here. Here's a perfect example. This would be kind of a nice little spot set by this big tree. Clear some of the grass away and have a little fire and stuff. But look, right there. See this? Spruce. All that fine stuff. All it takes is a spark to go up in there and land in some of that and whew, up she goes. So pay attention, um, you know, the, to where your, where your light, oh sorry, where you're lighting, lighting your fire. Um, I know I said I'd show you a little something. Um, I'll show that a little bit later. I was going to do do something but I'll, I'll I'll show you what I something you can add to your bird's nest sorry I was not looking at the camera but, um, so we're gonna get transferred down to that um, little sand barge there along the river and hopefully I can find some stuff I'd like to show you some show you some stuff there along the river so all right we'll see you in a bit So, hopefully you can see this all okay. Um, thought I'd show you here what I'm talking about when I said about something to put in your bird's nest. This punk wood. This is real fine wood, it's rotten, real super dry. You put that in your uh, bird's nest and it helps hold that ember a lot longer. This is um, some lichen that I was pointing out earlier. Makes a great bird's nest. As you can see, it's it's really really good. Um, and then you have your obviously your uh, your cedar bark that you can strip down. And you can just grind her up and I know 
There's a million and a one people out there showing you how to do this stuff on YouTube and everywhere else. But I just uh, thought I'd bring you along on this with me today. Just out here enjoying myself. I love doing this stuff. I just haven't been able to do it. I haven't had time. You can see how the fibers are breaking down real nice. I don't know if you can see it, but there's dust actually coming off of that. That's how dry it is. And you see all that, that fiberish material there. That's awesome stuff. And that's that cedar bark again. Another thing you can put in, I'm going to put that inside my, that lichen and put it in there in there then I'm going to take some of this uh, wood this punk wood put grind it up in there now something else that I do um, when I'm doing making bow drill fires and stuff I get a piece of bark. I get a piece of bark that uh, from off of a tree or something, a dead tree. I put my bear, my base on here, and then it catches my ember on here. Then I can just take and put that in my bird's nest and set my bird's nest on here. This is nice if it's really wet out or snow or something like that. It keeps it up off the wet ground and stuff. So, I'm going to put that. But anyways, inside on some of these old trees in the bark, there's where the termites and stuff are chewing and real fine wood where they chewed, chewed that all up. You can gather you can gather that stuff up and put that in your bird's nest as well. It's good, good stuff, real good stuff. So I'm gonna take now um, I'm gonna take and uh, put uh, clean up our clean up our base get my hole started um, I gotta get a bow yet um, but get that and get all that ready and then uh, I'll be back with you so see you in a see you in a little bit okay guys so I got everything ready I got my base my spindle my bearing block, which is a bearing block thing that I make. Um, I sell these. It's, they're actually out of a horseshoe rasp. Uh, I make different ones. This is a rounded one. Um, has a little bit of file on it. They're made out, like I said, out of a old horseshoe rasp. Um, but that's where you put your spindle in to hold it as your bearing block. Um, so you can do that and that gives you a little knife edge and a striker for flint and steel. Um, the flat ones have a lot more file on them on both sides. Um, has a little like thing you use as a flathead screwdriver or, or uh, um, scribing or whatever there. So, but that's what I use as my bearing block. These fit in an Altoids tin. So, um, but I'm going to zoom in here. Uh, hopefully I can stay out of your way so you see what's going on. Um, this camera don't, don't uh, focus real well when it's 
zoomed in real far, but I'm gonna try and show you everything. Got everything set up. We got our um, piece of bark that we'll catch the ember with, and then we got our bird's nest set up. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna zoom out just to make sure that try and make sure that I catch everything for you. So, all right, here we go. You don't you just take your time with this. Um, you don't have to go crazy and start really pumping and stuff. Um, like I said, there's a gazillion and one videos out there um, on how to do this. I'm just taking you along for some fun. Um, this is cedar. The base is cedar. This is a piece of dead alder. My spindle. Place it in there. And here we go. start seeing smoke don't get all excited and everything you need a good ember Hopefully you can see that. We've got some uh, smoke going there in our ember. I'm just letting this catch up. Hopefully you can see this okay. See that smoke coming out of there? You don't have to get crazy. And worry about it real, real fast. As you can see. I'm going to drop this in my bird's nest. We'll catch some air. Okay, that fire. My small branches, start out with real small branches, always. I should have
I should have a lot smaller branches. A bigger pile of smaller branches you should have. Now these are really dry so I'm not worried about it that, as much, but should have a, a big pile of small branches. Get everything back out of the way. Take, take your time. When you're gathering up your materials, that's one thing that a lot of people do, is they get, they get real hasty on gathering up their materials for their fire. And they don't, they don't gather enough small twigs. They don't gather enough small tinder and stuff. Now I'm not going to build a great big fire, it's, it's warm out today, so I'm not going to build a great big fire. I just enjoy making fires, practicing my skills and stuff, so I'm, I'm actually going to burn this fire set. Um, just, just because. So. That'll be some of my wood for my little fire. And the creeks, or the river, the river's right there. I can put out my fire good. I'm on this sandbar, so the sand, I can not worry about fire. And this is real damp. I mean, this, this sand is like super damp. Um, so I'm not worried about catching stuff on fire here. Well, this was my for my bow too. That, that was also a piece of um, alder for my bow. Green alder, it is. So, well guys, I'm uh, this camera's gonna shut off here in a second. So I gotta shut it and restart it. So, I'm going to um, put my, sorry about that, I'm going to put my stuff away um, and just sit here and relax a little bit and enjoy my fire. Like I said, I, I enjoy making uh, bow drill fires, um, I said that in one of my other videos. I, uh, there's just something about it, any kind of friction fire I, you know, enjoy, it's, uh, I don't know, there's just something, something neat about it, so, I'm going to sit here and enjoy this, uh, there's a couple other things in the river that I want to show you, so, when I get done enjoying this fire, uh, I'll be back with you, and, uh, hopefully show you some more stuff here, so. Uh, thanks for watching these videos too. We'll see you in a bit. So guys, that's what's left of my fire. Um, threw some of the bigger pieces into the river. And then I uh, buried everything else. That dirt, like I said, is really, really wet damp 
So what little tiny ashes I had there, um, I stomped them out good and then piled it up with that wet sand, dug a hole and piled it up. So I'm not worried about it going anywhere. There's the river. Made me a fancy little selfish stick. <laughs> um, just that that bow that I had for my bow drill. I have a little tripod thing, and I turned it into my selfish stick. So I'm not all big and up into all this fancy selfie stuff and everything else hawk just flew over um so that's why I kind of poke fun at it if you're into that whatever I just I'm not into all that fancy stuff and always taking selfies and stuff like that <laughs> so well we're gonna head down the river um see if I can do like everybody else does and all that fancy selfie stuff and not fall flat in my face huh um, but uh, just double check make sure I got everything I think I do check all right so I thought what I might do is uh, see if I can find some of this stuff I had come along here earlier and uh, there was some little frogs that jumped out into the water. Uh, I'm going to try and show you a couple of things that you could eat if you uh, had to. Uh, one is frogs. Obviously there's little fish. Uh, you could catch fish and, and eat them. Um, I don't know, I gotta poke around here. There is a, um, freshwater clam that I did a little research on, and from what people say, they say that they're not good eating, and other ones say that you should stay away from them. Some of them say, yes, they're good. Um, I don't know. If I was starving, um, I think at that point I'd, uh, I'd eat them. Cook them up, obviously, but eat them. But, uh, I'm gonna try and find some of them and see if we can show you, um, show you any of them. But, uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep rolling along here. Um, we're heading down that way. We're gonna see if we can find some, and uh, if I can, I'll get one and show you what they look like, just so you can have a have a see what they what they look like. I think that's a shell of one right there. Looks like there's a shell of one, but we're gonna see if we can find you one. So, all right. Well, we'll see you in a see you in a bit here. Hopefully, I uh, find one. I'll point it out. All right. Later. Okay, guys. So here's something else. The other thing I wanted to show you, and it just so happens that God gave me this. This is awesome. Okay, right down there. I hope you can see them. Right there. And right there are some crayfish. They're feeding on a little dead fish right there. They're not huge, but they're they're decent. Um, one's coming up along here. You take them and you boil them up and you eat them. They're good eating. Uh, this is all stuff, you know, if you were in a survival situation and you needed stuff to eat. I've, I've eaten them uh, crabs or crayfish um, 
since I was little. We used to go down to the creek and gather a bunch of them up and boil them and feast away. Um, but uh, that'd be that'd be a perfect thing there. You could take the get the crayfish and uh, if you're in a survival situation, get the crayfish and use the little fish for uh, for bait. So and those crabs or those yeah those crabs those um, mussels that I was telling you about clams. Uh, you could use them for bait too. I wanted to show you here, right, uh, right there, is a shallow one, and right, uh, where's that there? Da -da -da -da. Right in there somewhere it is, but right there, yeah, that's the that's a shallow one. So there's some around here. Um, I just gotta, just gotta find them. Uh, I seen a couple shells just a little bit ago. I seen a couple shells of them. Again, all this stuff just no. I'm not some kind of professional. Um So do your own research and uh um do your own research. And, uh, you know, be cautious. Be cautious of what you eat all the time. And, uh, yeah, it's just stuff that would be good to have in your, your toolbox, um, in your mind, if you're ever in a survival situation, food you can eat, you know. But once I find a clam here, I'll I'll get back with you. But that those crayfish, that is something I want. Another thing I wanted to show you um, that you you could eat. So, all right, I'll find one. I'll be back with you. Okay, guys. So we found one. Um, hopefully, I think it's still alive. Uh, but we're gonna, right there, I'm gonna try pulling it out for you, and, uh, hopefully I can do that without, uh, set my gun down here, um, without, uh, falling in the river. Yeah, it's still alive. They look like. Um, I'm not gonna bust him open, um, just to show you. But uh, that's uh, that's what the freshwater mussels. Okay, like said I. I'd like to do some more research, but uh, some of the research I found, um, they said that uh, you want to be careful. You know, like what's upstream from where you find them and, and get them to eat um, I, I believe that it's that way with anything but I'm gonna put him back back in there um, but uh, I wouldn't be afraid to to eat you know, to eat them if I was in a survival situation. I, I wouldn't be afraid at all to eat them. Um, but just go out. Grab my gun here. Go out and learn this stuff. It's just good to know. Um, learn it have it in your mind and and it's it's good to go out and find this stuff before you ever need it um, be observant when you're out and go out and go out and go for hikes and stuff and 
Be observant. Stop and look around. Focus on stuff. You know, see, see, see stuff. Um, you see so much more when you uh, take the time to see it. Now that's kind of sounds weird, but if you take time to notice things, take notice how the squirrels are doing stuff. Take notice how nature's doing stuff around you. You know, God put all this stuff out there for us. Go out and enjoy it. Learn it. So, take care, guys, and God bless.